Hello and welcome to today's tutorial. In this uh, class, today we shall discuss about the class test one questions that was more or less objective type and it will be followed by uh, discussion about the questions uh, that you will raise in this class. So, <coughs> first question was essentially a fill in the blanks question. It was an uh, enhancement mode NMOS transistor with VTN is equal to 0.6 volt has its source connected to ground terminal and 1.5 volt is applied to the gate for VDD is equal to 0 0.4 volt, 1.0 volt and 3 volt the transistors operates in the dash, dash and dash respectively. So, in what regions they really work that has to be decided. As you know, uh, if you look at the characteristics of a MOS transistor, end MOS transistor, if you plot say this is VDS versus IDS current voltage characteristics, it is somewhat like this. And uh, a line which is uh, which separates this is called to I, uh, VDS, VDS is called to VGS minus VT. So, this particular line separates the uh, linear region with the saturation region. This part is the saturation region. and this part is the linear region. So, there are three parameter, three parameters one is your V D S, second is your V G S, third is your V T that determines in which region the transistor is operating. So, in this particular problem we find that your uh, V D D is called uh, your V uh, T N is equal to 0 0.6 volt and V G S is equal to 1.5 volt these are fixed that means V T is equal to 0 0.6 volt V G S is equal to 1.5 volt. Now, V D S is essentially the voltage that is applied across the transistor. Now, for the in the first case when V D D is equal to 0 0.4 volt then we find that V D S is uh, less than V G S minus V T. That means, this is 0 0.4 volt and this is uh, 1.5 minus 0 0.6 that is equal to 0 0.9 volt. So, since this is uh, less than 0 0.9 volt the transistor is in linear region. On the other hand in the second case when it is 1 volt, so this is uh, more than uh, this V G S minus V T, so it will be in the saturation region. In the third case when uh, V D D is equal to V D D is essentially the uh, supply voltage, uh, voltage across drain and source is equal to 3 volt, then also it will be in saturation. So, therefore, uh, in this particular case the answer is the, the it will be in linear region saturation region and saturation region. Okay? Okay. So, this is the first question. Second question was a transmission gate has an output voltage of 1.5 volt at a particular instant assuming that V D D is equal to 5 volt, V T N is equal to 1 volt, V T V is equal to minus 1 volt and V in is equal to 0 volt. The NMOS transistor is operating in the dash region and PMOS transistor is operating in the dash region. So, in this particular case you consider a transmission gate this is the PMOS transistor and this is the NMOS transistor. Since the switch is transmission gate is on that means this is a 0 volt is applied to it and a VDD is applied to the NMOS transistor. Now, you have applied a voltage of uh, V in is equal to uh, 1.5 volt here. 1.5 volt this is your this is your V in. Now, and uh, uh, no sorry output voltage is 0 1.5 1.5 uh, V in is equal to 0 volt 0 0.0 volt 1.5 volt. So, in this case in this case what is the condition of these three transistors. Now, here we find 
this NMOS transistor, NMOS transistor we consider it as the source, this is gate and this is drain. Now, what is the uh, gate voltage? Gate voltage VGS, VGS is equal to 5 volt, in this case gate voltage is 5 volt and what is the uh, drain voltage? I mean the, the, uh, the VDS, VDS is equal to 1.5 volt and what is VGS minus VT? That is equal to 5 minus uh, threshold voltage is 1 volt, so it is 4 volt. Therefore, in this case we find that VDS is less than VGS minus VT. So, what is the condition of the transistor? The, ten, the NMOS transistor will be in NMOS in linear region. What about the PMOS transistor? In case of PMOS transistor, we find that uh, we, can, we can consider it as uh, uh, this one as source this one as sorry this one this one as source this one as gate and this one as drain so since this is source this particular terminal is source uh, and this is 1.5 volt and this is 0 volt that means uh, this transistor is in the gate is more negative with respect to source therefore and since the threshold voltage is uh, minus 1 volt this transistor is definitely on now, in which mode it, it, it will be? So, in this particular case we find that uh, the VDS is equal to 1.5 volt and VDS is 1.5 volt, yeah minus 1.5 volt and what about the V, uh, v uh, GS minus VT? What is the value here? VGS is equal to minus 1.5 and, and threshold voltage is minus 1 volt. So, it becomes plus. So, it is becomes 0 minus 0 0.5 volt. So, in this case what is the situation? This transistor will be, so this one, this, this, this one is less than this one. So, therefore, this transistor will be in saturation that means PMOS in saturation. Okay. So, PMOS will be in saturation and NMOS will be in linear region. Oh, I have written it just the opposite by mistake. Okay. So, here is a typo that means it will be in linear region NMOS and PMOS will be in saturation region. Okay. Now, coming to the third question, delay in CMOS gate increases with the increase in fan in. So, how the delay of a uh, CMOS gate increases both for NOR and NAND? In case of NAND gate, as we know, we have the NMOS transistors in series in case of uh, NAND gate. So, here it is VDD, I have drawn a 3 input NAND gate. So, how the delay increases in this case? Delay as we know is proportional to uh, N if N is the input. Therefore, uh, uh, I mean the pull down time is increased. So, pull down time time increases by a factor of n with respect to uh, inverter. Similarly, if we consider NOR, we find that the n PMOS transistors are in series. whereas NMOS transistor in parallel. So, in this case the pull down time will not be affected, but pull up time will increase by a factor of n. 
So, it will be proportional to n the pull up time. Therefore, we can consider we, we may say that in both the cases the delay is increasing linearly with the fan in. So, the answer is the delay of a CMOS gate increases linearly with the increase in fan in. Okay. So, uh, but uh, uh, the increase in delay uh, that occurs in two different ways in two types of gates. In case of NAND gate, is, it is because of the uh, delay of the uh, series NMOS transistors. In case of NOR gate, it is because of the delay of the series PMOS transistors that you have to keep in your mind. Coming to the uh, fourth question, ring oscillator ring oscillators are used for what purpose that is written here. So, ring oscillators are used for, for the measurement of delay that is one of the primary application. However, although this is one of the most important application when a particular uh, device is fabricated based on new technology, ring oscillator can be used as a clock, but you know that uh, clock is not the primary application because you know uh, the clock frequency cannot be precisely controlled. Normally, we use uh, RC oscillator or sometimes we use crystal oscillator where you want a very stable fixed uh, frequency. So, therefore, primary use is not uh, as clock generator although it can be used as clock generator, but it is routinely used for the for characterization of a device of new technology for the in other words it, it is being used for the measurement of delay. So, an n input static CMOS gate requires how many times MOS transistors and whereas, a dynamic CMOS gate requires how many transistors. So, this is the question. So, as you know an n input static CMOS gate requires 2 n MOS transistors if n is the number of inputs. For example, here uh, this is a 3 input NAND gate, so we require 6 transistors. So, this is a 3 input NOR gate, we require 6 transistors that means 2 n is the number of transistors that we require. On the other hand, whenever we go for uh, dynamic CMOS as we know, we require the uh, we can use either the PMOS network or the NMOS network, whatever we use say in this case we have used NMOS network. In that case, we require this n transistor plus 2. So, in this case, we require uh, n plus 2 transistors. So, that is the answer. Uh, in, an input static CMOS gate requires 2 n MOS transistors, whereas a dynamic CMOS gate requires n plus 2 MOS transistors. Okay. Next question is dynamic CMOS gate gates are about uh, how many times faster than their static CMOS counterpart. We have explained that the uh, increase in speed occurs because of two reasons. Number one is the number of transistor is almost uh, reduced to half. Secondly, the capacitance that it will be driving, output will be driving also reduces by a factor of two. So, half reduction due to a reduction in the number of transistors and another half reduction because of the uh, lesser capacitance. So, we may say that about uh, 4 times increase in speed is possible about 4 times. So, the answer is uh, dynamic CMOS gates are about 4 times faster than their static CMOS counterpart. Next question is charge sharing problem in dynamic CMOS circuits leads to uh, some problem. What is the problem? Charge sharing problem in dynamic CMOS circuits leads to undefined output. So, we know that uh, whenever a dynamic CMOS say for example, here this one uh, we have a capacitor load capacitance and here are there are two more capacitances are present. It may so happen that because of charge sharing uh, after redistribution of the charge which is stored during precharge period here uh, will be distributed uh, in these three capacitors that will lead to reduction in the voltage. 
as a consequence that voltage cannot be precisely defined. You cannot tell it high, you may not tell it 0, it, not, it all depends the relative value of the various capacitances and the way the charge sharing occurs. This is one the most important uh, outcome of charge sharing and of course, uh, later on we shall see that charge sharing also leads to kind of uh, additional power dissipation. For example, uh, you have charged it to 1 and subsequently next output is also 1. So, uh, in between uh, during evaluation it will be uh, it will discharge and again you have to charge. So, that will lead to uh, kind of additional power dissipation, but uh, primary uh, outcome is undefined output. Next question is clock skew problem of dynamic CMOS circuits can be overcome using dash circuits. As you know, uh, uh, clock skew occurs because of uh, distribution of the clock in the in the circuit, in the circuit, and uh, you know uh, the next stage may receive the clock earlier than the pre preceding stage it may so happen because of the clock distribution circuit and that leads to uh, uh, clock skew problem and uh, you know you may get incorrect output. And we have already discussed this problem can be overcome by use of two types of circuits, one is known as domino CMOS or Nora CMOS. So, by using either of the two types of circuits, you can overcome the problem of, problem of clock skew. Then comes the swing restoration uh, problem, swing restoration logic raises the voltage level from this to this. So, swing restoration logic is used in pass transistor logic circuits. As you know, whenever you, uh, uh, you want to pass a 1 through a pass transistor, say VDD is input, here you have applied VDD and you will get here VDD minus V t and here you normally put a swing restoration logic normally a uh, weak PMOS transistor is connected to uh, VDD and uh, gate is connected to ground and is uh, the, this what is the swing restoration logic does is raises the voltage from VDD minus V t to VDD. So, the charging of this capacitor which is essentially the gate capacitance of the next stage will be raised from VDD minus VTN to VDD. So, that is the job of the swing restoration logic. It raises the voltage level from VDD minus VTN to VDD. Next question is thick path leads to uh, uh, some problem in pass transistor logic circuits. What kind of problem it can lead? Again, in, in this case, it leads to undefined output. As you have seen, suppose you have a number of pass transistors and this is connected to VDD and these are all on and you have another set of pass transistors through this is connected to ground. And so, a snake path has been created here and the voltage here uh, actually will be dependent on the relative value of the on resistance of these PMO NMOS transistors and the on resistance of these transistors. As a result, you will neither get VDD nor get 0. So, something in between it may be VDD by uh, 3, 2 or something if, if, if the resistance is equal you will get VDD by 2 or something else that will depend on the number of transistors in series in this part and this part. So, it all it again leads to undefined output in pass transistor logic circuits. Then coming to question 2, it was for the same area realization, the noise margin of a pseudo NMOS inverter is dash than that of inverter realized with an NMOS depletion type uh, as pull up device. Write two lines in support of your statement. First, you, you have to complete your sentence. For the same area realization, the noise margin of a pseudo NMOS inverter is better than that of inverter realized uh, with an NMOS depletion type uh, uh, as pull up device 
and the statement in support of this statement you have to write for the same area the resistance of PMOS transistor is more. As you know PMOS transistor because of the because of uh, lesser mobility of holes with respect to electrons the for the same area a PMOS transistor will offer more resistance. As a consequence the low level output voltage of pseudo NMOS uh, is, uh, is smaller giving better noise margin. That means, say you are comparing a pseudo NMOS circuit, here you have got NMOS network, sorry this is connected to ground, this is connected to VDD or another alternative is it is depletion mode transistor. So, this is connected to uh, connected to this and here is your NMOS network and this is connected to ground. Now, uh, as you know the resistance of this I mean has to be 4 times of, uh, of the NMOS network part, so that you get a low, proper low level. Now, if they have the same area then this will the resistance of this will be about 3 times and as you know V O L is equal to the resistance of the NMOS network by the resistance of this plus this. Since this is more the denominator part will be higher than the numerator and as a consequence the V O L that is the low level voltage as you know in this case uh, you get uh, you do not get 0 voltage at the lower level. So, V O L will be lower in this particular circuit than this one and as a consequence the noise margin of pseudo NMOS circuit will be better than the then that of using uh, the uh, de depletion type NMOS transistor as full up device. Coming to the next question, for the same area realization gates are better choice than uh, I mean type of gates are better choice than gates I mean NAND or NOR write two lines in support of your questions. So, which which gates are better, better choice than other type of gates? The answer is for the same area realization NAND gates are a better choice than NOR gates and the statement that you have to write in support of this is as NOR gates have PMOS transistors in series and NAND gates have NMOS transistors in series NAND gates provides better I mean provide a smaller delay and better noise margin as I have already explained while explaining this you know this delay of this will be more than that of this that is number 1 and as you know uh, the noise margin is also better here because uh, as the fan, fan in increases for the same area uh, initially the, the threshold switching threshold voltage is lesser than VDD by 2 and then it moves towards VDD by 2 then goes. Uh, I mean it becomes more than V by 2. As a consequence the uh, NAND gates gives you better noise margin and uh, also smaller delay and as a consequence the NAND gates are better choice than the NOR gates. Coming to the last question obtain ROBDD for the Boolean function A with, a, with the ordering ABC problem is f is equal to a exclusive or b exclusive of c use Shannon's expansion theorem to get the ROBDD. Uh, here is the Shannon expansion let me expand it again. So, your f is a uh, exclusive or b exclusive or c. So, first you have to expand around around uh, A, then you will expand around B and C. As you know we can write it as A, uh, A, uh, uh, A and B exclusive or C plus A bar B plus C bar, you can expand it this way. So, we see that by expanding this we get this one. So, this can be written as this and then we expand around B. 
So, it becomes B, B exclusive of C is B dot C dot C dash plus B C dot. Uh, B dot C yeah, plus uh, A dash. So, this is essentially B C plus B bar C bar. So, expansion around B has been done. Now, you can again expand around C. This will give you A B C dash is nothing but C into 0 plus C dot into 1 plus B dash. Uh, this is C. So, C into 1 plus C dot into 0 then this one again you can expand a dot b c is nothing but b c into 1 plus c dot into 0 plus b dot c dot if you expand it will be equal to c into c dot c into 0 plus c dot into 1. So, now you have fully expanded uh, in the order a b and c. Now, from this you can really uh, draw your v d d. So, first you will you have to start with A and you will have two lip nodes B and B. So, this corresponds to A and this corresponds to A bar. Okay. So, this is your output F. Now, uh, uh, from uh, as you can see A B goes to C uh, a B goes to C and that goes to 0, C bar goes to and C bar goes to A B C goes to 0 uh, and uh, C bar goes to 1. So, we can write we can we will have two more arms C and C zero and 1. these are the dotted lines and this is another dotted line. So, you can see uh, if we follow this a b c dot z, c dot 0 and a b c bar dot 1 a b c bar a b a b This is this is a so that is a bar. So this is a this is a bar. Acha acha a bar actually it should be a bar and this will be a. So I have written it wrongly. This will be a bar and this will be a. Okay. So that was wrong. A bar this and a a this. Okay. So that was the wrong thing. So a you can see a b c to 1 a b c 1. So, this is one path then a b c bar 0 a b c bar going to 0 this path this is complete then a b bar a b bar c c goes to 0 and a b bar c dot 1 a b bar c bar goes to 1. So, that completes this path these two paths and similarly a bar b a bar b then c goes to 0 this is complete then a bar b c bar a bar b c bar sorry a bar b c bar goes to 1 and a bar uh, a bar b c bar goes to 1 that is complete similarly a a bar b bar this is a bar this is b bar C C goes to 1 and A bar B bar C bar goes to 0. So, that completes the VDD. Okay. So, this is the this is how you can generate a VDD for any given function. I have expanded by using I have shown it how it can be done by expanding the function uh, uh, using Sanon expansion. However, you can uh, also do it by another approach uh, where you can start with the tooth table then you can reduce uh, remove with a full uh, tree you can BDD you can start this entry then you can remove the redundant nodes and edges you will get the same out same result. So, with this we have completed our discussion on the uh, questions that we 
that you have given that you have given uh, in your in my uh, tutorial i mean the class test one now if you have any questions please pass on to me so i have received several questions let me discuss one after the other first question is let me read out uh, super buffers what is its use number one question number two is how the characteristics will vary for transmission gate when it is driving a large capacitive load uh, as uh, as it is as it drives say small capacitive load okay let me start with the first question super buffer super buffer uh, as you know main function is to drive large capacitive load now when you are driving by using say standard gates like nand and nor for example let me use this diagram again say whenever you are using say nand gate or nor gate we find that it is asymmetric in nature why it is asymmetric because this pulled out time is longer than pull up time here pull up time is longer than pull down time so this asymmetry is removed by uh, in super buffers how it has been removed that i have discussed in detail that is number one because the driving capacity uh, is increased so instead of uh, using i mean at the output of this you will put a super buffer that will drive a large capacity load so here is your super buffer so here you will put a super buffer and that will drive the large capacity load this is this is number 1 that means the asymmetry is removed second is lesser delay why lesser delay because the delay in this case you know is more because it is through a series of transistors here also through a series of transistors but in case of super buffer we have seen only one transistor is there pull up and pull down so delay will be less so because of these two reasons the delay of the super buffer i mean you can drive a large capacity load and uh, delay will be small that's the basic idea uh, in fact uh, the use of bi cmos inverter is also for the same reason that delay it can it has higher driving capability so delay will be less now that answers the first question second is how the characteristics will vary for transmission gate when it is driving a large capacity load if it if it drives a as it, and, and if it drives a small capacity load see you see we have already discussed the the problem of driving a capacity load with the with the help of a transmission gate say a transmission gate driving a large capacity load and small capacity load what will be the problem so problem will be somewhat similar whenever you drive with a do uh, with a pass transistor logic circuit so whenever you drive it obviously uh, the here it is more advantageous because you have two paths and but here it will be only through one path so that means charging will be slower that is number 1 because the charging current as the for example if this this is vdd and this is vdd and as the charge builds up the current will keep on decreasing because the drain voltage is reduced as it as you know uh, as long as it is in the saturation region current drive is okay but uh, as the it, as it comes to the linear region the current will gradually reduce through this uh, and the consequent charging will be slow and it will turn off when you know the the voltage difference is Uh, here uh, the here it is vdd minus vt so this kind of problem will arise whenever you are driving pass transistors that is the reason why always you will find we use a uh, 
uh, instead of driving through pass register, we put a buffer or swing restoration logic at the output. A buffer is provided. So, this is the pass transistor logic. And at the output of pass transistor logic, we put some buffer and that drives the capacitive loads. Uh, we have seen the pass transistor logic family, DPL, SRPL and various other logic families or uh, that leap family. The always we have seen some buffers are at the output are provided at the output to drive the capacitive loads. So, that problem is overcome by using capacitive loads. So, Shannon expansion theorem I have already explained with the help of this example. What Shannon expansion theorem does? Say there is a function f f 1 f which is which is a function of say n variables x 2, x 3, x n. Now, you can write it in the form of this x 1 f x 1 plus x 1 bar f x 1 dash bar. So, what you are doing? You are expanding around the variable x 1. So, in this case f x 1 which is known as reduced function is a function of the remaining variables. For example, here I have expanded around a. So, here you find that these are functions of the uh, remaining variables. This is your b and c. Similarly, this is also function of the remaining variables. So, this and this will be a function of the remaining variables and again you can further expand it as you have seen. So, this was around a, this was around b and then you have expanded around c. So, you can see uh, this is again a function of the since only the three variables are there obviously, it will be constant. So, that is what you have got. That means, if you keep on expanding you will get ultimately constants like zeros and ones and uh, that this is what is Shannon expansion. So, the Shannon expansion help us to generate the reduced functions and also it can be used to uh, you know uh, get the pass transistor logic network. For example, once you have got this you can map it to a pass transistor network because uh, you know this is this is uh, this will act like a 2 to 1 multiplexer, this will act like a 2 to 1 multiplexer, this will be a like a 2 to 1 multiplexer that means each will be represented by a 2 to 1 multiplexer that means this a will be applied here and a bar will be applied here and this is the output. Similarly, b you will put another uh, pass transistor network and this, this will correspond to a b and this will correspond to b bar. So, in this way you can form a pass transistor tree from this, uh, say the, from this uh, ROBDD and can, you can realize the circuit. So, this is how Shannon uh, expansion is done. Now, the question is so, this is an AND gate. In case of an AND gate, Suppose you have a two input NAND gate. So, A and B and it is realizing a function f is equal to A dot B bar and as you know the tooth table is A, B, F 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0. So, that means, if any one of the input is 0, output is 1, when both of them are 1, output is 0. Now, you can find out the probability of transition from one state to one input to another input. So, output, output can be, there are two possible outputs, one is 0, another is 1. You may say that this is the output state of this gate. Now, 
you can essentially draw a straight, a straight transition diagram and the edges will show the probability of transition. So, what is the probability of transition from 0 to 1? From 0 to 1 you, need, you see here you have got only 1 0 and here you have got only 1 1 I mean 3 1s. So, probability of transition from here to here is 1 by 4 into 3 by 4. That means, as we know P 0 to 1 is equal to P 0 into P 1. Okay. So, this is the probability, probability of 1 and probability of 0 of remaining in 0. Now, what about this probability 0 to 0? So, here you know it, it has got only 1 0 and again probability of going to 0 is 1 by 4. So, out of 4 possibilities. So, this is the probability that it will go from 0 to 0, output will go from 0 to 0. Similarly, from 1 to 1 it will the probability will be uh, 3 by 4 and into 3 by 4. Similarly, from 1 to 0 the probability will be 3 by 4 into 1 by 4. So, I think I believe this is what is uh, the question. <coughs> now, uh, the another question is NMOS depletion type transistor here VGS is equal to 0 volts every time uh, but in paper there is some VGS is equal to V out. So, this is a question related to a depletion mode transistor. Uh, as pull up device and here you have pull, got an input V in is applied here and you will get V out. Now, what will be the uh, what will be the output? You see whenever this is not a pass transistor network. In this particular case this is a NMOS depletion type this is uh, this is NMOS enhancement type. So, if you draw the characteristic curve of this transistor, it will be like this. And so far as this transistor is concerned, you have to draw it the other way that means, it will be somewhat like this. So, initially what will be the case whenever V is equal to 0 volt? V in is equal to 0 volt, what will be the output? This transistor is off and this transistor is on. So, you will get VDD at the output. So, this is your uh, this is IDS and this is VDS. So, initially the voltage will be uh, here A and as the voltage is increased uh, above threshold volt as the voltage goes above threshold voltage of this transistor then it will move to this point then as the uh, as the voltage is increased it will move gradually and ultimately it will reach this point and this is the vol this is at that time both the transistors are on and uh, you will get a output voltage uh, which is decided by the ratio of these two transistors and uh, the question is not very clear from this writing anyway, whatever is I have understood I have explained. Uh, here there is a question of driving a large capacitive load uh, say 1000 cg. Now, question is this is a point coming out from a pin, say this is a pin, from here the output is coming out and you have connected a capacitance Cg, I mean 1000 Cg. Now, what will be the, uh, what will be the, uh, what will be the delay in driving this? So, if you normally we put a inverter here, inverter if this inverter is of unit ratio I mean single I mean there is no uh, 
increase in size width is minimum length and width is minimum 2 lambda 2 lambda by 2 lambda then what will be the delay then as we know the delay will be 1000 tau 1000 tau however you are driving this from internally so we may say that there is some delay in driving this capacitance also so here it will be 1000 tau and in driving this capacitance assuming that this is also being driven by unit gate i mean uh, gate delay so here maybe an inverter is there driving this also will involve a delay of 1 tau so the total delay is 1000 1 tau so this delay in driving this capacitor and delay in driving this capacitor so here also you have got a capacitor which is equal to cg so to drive this capacitor there will be a delay of tau and to drive this capacitor there will be a delay of 1000 tau now if you put uh, several stages like say uh, first you have put one this one then you have put 10 times then you have put 1000 times then uh, 100 times so this is 1 10 stage ratio 10 and here is the 10 ratio 100 now you are driving this capacitance which is 1000 cg so what will be the total delay in driving this capacitance there will be tau in driving this capacitance there will be 10 tau in driving this capacitance there will be a delay of 10 tau and in driving this there will be a delay of 10 tau so what is the total delay 10 plus 10 plus 10 plus 1 so it will be 31 tau okay so this will be the delay in driving this through these three inverters okay so i believe this is the question that has been given uh, is there any other question Uh, I think uh, there is a question like this, I mean here it is written how you are getting n by 2 e into 5 tau. Anyway, the question is not very clear what has been written. So, I cannot really answer unless the question is properly known. Any, any other doubt? You can pass on in writing. So, here uh, there is a question about how you can simplify let me draw the VDD that has been given. Say A, B, this goes to B, from here it comes to C, it goes to C, C, it goes to C, then here 0, 1 0 1 0 1 0 here it is 1 how to simplify this as i mentioned first step will be to merge the zeros and ones at the bottom uh, leaf line that means you have to follow uh, a kind of kind of bottom up approach I mean from the leaf nodes you have to go towards your uh, to towards the, uh, towards the uh, root node. So how, how will you proceed? So first step will be A, B, B, C, 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 
c so all the zeros are to be combined so let me write 0 here let me write 1 here so 0 is coming from here 0 is also coming from here 0 is coming from here sorry 0 is coming from here so i have written wrongly 0 is coming from there and 1 is coming from here 1 is coming from here and from from this one is going to again one and from this it is going to one so this is the first step after this first step we find that that means uh, this 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 particular zero this is this is going to zero this is going to one this is going to zero this is going to one this is going to zero this is going to zero so here also the last this is going to 0 and this is going to 1. So, we find that all the c's are same that means this, this c, this c, this c, this c all the c's that has been given that means the 0 is going to 0, 1 is going to 1 for all the cases. So, this will become a b b and all the c's will merge I mean not all there will be two C's one is your dot another is your from here it will come here also dot this will go here from here also it will go here. So, this will go to uh, both the cases 0 and 1. So, 1 1 0 ok. So, here we again find that these b's. So, this is this is 0 this is 1 and so what will happen in this particular case uh, b this one and this one and this one and this one uh, this c. So, this c again will merge because you can see these are identical. So, it will be same. So, that means uh, I have omitted one step this will be b b. So, all of them since these are this this will merge it will become one c because uh, this and dot all are going to c and this is going to 0 and this is going to 1. So, this this will this will this will disappear and once this disappear b will also disappear. So, in this particular function it will become a b b and c will no longer be there because directly the c will emerge and it will come here 0 and so that means the solid lines will go to 1 dotted lines will go to 0 this like this again we find that in this case also b will merge a b will merge and it will become single b dotted line going to 0 solid line going to 1 again it is independent of b so it will be a dotted line will go to 0, solid line will go to 1 and it will become a. So, we find that from this after minimization uh, and it, it is essentially equal to a. So, it is independent of b and c. So, a is 1 and uh, when a is equal to 1 it is going to 1 and a bar is equal to 1 it is going to 0. So, it, it will realize a function a. So, this is a very redundant function. So, we find that all the edges and nodes are getting removed because of this minimization. Okay. So, with this uh, let us come to the end of today's tutorial.
thank you